that we still have some at least one big prep this weekend. We have two notable preps, the Arkansas Derby and the Lexington. Let's start with the Arkansas Derby. Matt, you have Quip, who won the Tampa Bay Derby. It's a bit of a long shot in his first race of the year. Could be a very good horse. He beat Flame Away. Maybe he was flattered by that a little bit. And then we have the top four finishers from the Rebel, including the winner and the likely favorite, Magnum Moon. Yeah, we sure do. Like you said, Brian, uh, it, it, uh, the Arkansas Derby uh, probably doesn't have as big a field as we anticipated, but I think it's a very quality field with uh, the the top four horses. Um, we've got Magnum Moon, uh, who is uh, perfect in his career, three for three um, in his three races this year as a three-year-old. And it is a fact that, uh, that Brian, in the last five years, the winner of the Kentucky Derby has had a perfect record as a three-year-old heading into the Kentucky Derby. Um, Magnum Moon won the Rebel last time, has 50 points. We've got Quip, as you mentioned, the winner of the Tampa Bay Derby, who has three wins in four starts. His only loss, Brian, came in that uh, Kentucky Jockey Club as a two-year-old, and that race turned out to be really key on the Derby Trail. We've got Salamini. Salamini has 34 points, is in 19th place on the Derby points list, so kind of on the bubble. It's kinda, it's looking like, Brian, maybe we're going to have a record number of points required to get into the field, so maybe Salamini needs a, needs a few more points. Shouldn't be hard for that horse. Uh, um, Salamini, Baffert, Zayats own it, another Curlin, um, I feel like Brian, he needs to, he needs to put it all, all together in this race. Uh, uh, no bumping, changing leads he needs to do. Uh, um, I need to see a race, uh, where he puts it all together. And if I think he, if he does that, I think he's a serious threat to win the race. And then Steve Asmussen may have as many as four horses in this race when they draw it on Wednesday, uh, led by combatant who has 22 points, super league, super consistent horse has three second places on the Derby trail and has a third place in the rebel. Um, I guess he's likely to hit the board again and maybe qualify for the Derby. Yeah, Matt, uh, title ready, set the pace in the uh, in the Rebel. Uh, it was a move forward, but I, I think he's a little bit of a long shot again. So that leaves us with the top three from the Rubble and Quip. You know, Quip, uh, Quip's hard, hard to know how good he is. He beat good horses in Tampa Bay. And, and, and if he moves a little bit forward off of that, he's got some speed. Quip is an interesting horse. But I still come back to the Rebel uh, horses. Uh, Combatant looks like a horse who who who's just a really nice horse and makes that move every time. But... It's never really going to get by for a, a truly big win. Solomini should move forward. That, that was his first race in a while when he ran second in the Rebel, and he, and he kind of fought off combatant down the stretch there. Magnum Moon was my pick in the Rebel. I've, I've liked him all along since I saw the first race, his maiden win, and then the allowance win at uh, Turfway. So I'm not getting off Magnum Moon at this point. Unfortunately, I'm on the favorite for the Arkansas Derby, but I think Magnum Moon... Uh, is 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 the real deal as well. Just adding to this list of real deal type of three-year-olds we'll see uh, in Louisville. As far as the bubble, Solomini, that, that means nothing to me because he's on the bubble now. I mean, if he, do, if he can't run first, second, third, or fourth in here, probably shouldn't even be in the Kentucky Derby. So, you know, that, that, that'll take care of itself. Magnum Moon and probably Combatant are in if they want in. And, and Quip is in too if he if he runs a good race here, and I think they should uh, uh, need to run decent races at least to move on to the Kentucky Derby. Let me go back to that stat you threw out because that's an interesting stat, a surprising stat, and a stat that really went against decades of Kentucky Derby winners. The last five Kentucky Derby winners were undefeated as three-year-olds after Kentucky Derby going in, and and obviously after the Kentucky Derby. Uh, that doesn't leave a lot of horses this year that you were talking about. Justify. Audible. Uh, we're talking about Mendelssohn overseas, of course. And then we're talking about possibly Quip or Magna Moon uh, if they can win the Arkansas Derby. So uh, that, that, that's a stat waiting to be broken. 
Maybe it will this year, but it, it, there's some strong candidates to keep it going. Um, I certainly think Magna Moon will will be the one that keeps it going on Saturday at Oakland Park. Yeah, I I am not concerned about Magna Moon coming into this race a little short, uh, going under the assumption he's already in the field. Uh, that is not Pletcher's style. I expect Magna Moon to come out firing at 100%. Not sure about Quip, though. Um, uh, Trader Rudolph uh, Brissett comes from the Bill Mott barn, and you know he 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 learned the craft under Bill Mott. So I, I'm not a hundred percent sure that Quip will be uh, firing with all cylinders in here, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, Solomini and Quip look like the uh, and combatant look like the top threats. Uh, Solo Mini, I think, uh, should move forward, and uh, probably that would be my exact, uh, the same as the Rebel. Uh, Quip, uh, who knows? Quip could be a good one. We'll see. Matt, the other uh, Kentucky Derby prep on Saturday is the Lexington right here uh, at Keeneland, and uh, it's interesting to me in that my boy Jack is coming back out of the Louisiana Derby. I thought it was a terrific performance he ran in the Louisiana Derby. He won the Southwest shot up the rail and just ran away from him at Oakland Park in the mud. But then in the Louisiana Derby, he only finished third. And that's why he's still on the bubble points wise. But uh, he just went as wide as you can possibly go almost on the far turn. And I thought it was a very good performance. So I want to see what my boy Jack does, because after Vino Rosso, I said he's my top long shot. My boy Jack is my second best long shot. Looks like he should be tough to beat on Saturday, but uh, interesting returner uh, coming from the springboard mile at Remington Park. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I I give credit to uh, the DeSarmo Barn with my boy Jack for bringing him right back and trying to get the points to get into the big race. 20 points only for the win in the Lexington, eight for second place. Either of those finishes should get my boy Jack in. And I think, Brian, you were referring to the return of Gravitos, um, who had looked very, very good in the beginning of the Kentucky Derby Trail with his win in the Springboard Mile, came out with some minor issues, uh, uh, physical issues after that, and then also had to uh, survive the fire at the uh, at the San Luis Ray Downs Training Center from the barn of Adam Kitchingman. So it, it's cool to see Gravitos back in here. Obviously, they're not prepping for the Kentucky Derby here. I think the word is that they're prepping for a start in the Preakness, and that seems like a good fit for this horse. Yeah, we talked about that the other day, Matt. I think the Preakness is, uh, this, this is a good Preakness prep for Gravitas, and uh, he'll, he'll find a much smaller field in Pimlico. And, and coming back, he hasn't run this year, so he, uh, he won the Bob Hoplas ball out there, and then he won, as we mentioned, the Springboard Mile, which was over combatants. So it was, a, it was a solid performance in Oklahoma to end the year. But he hasn't run at all this year, so he needs this race. My boy Jack uh, certainly has an experienced edge on Gravitas right now. Uh, but uh, my boy Jack, a real potential derby long shot. And Gravitas, uh, who knows? A nice win here sets him up well for the middle jewel of the Triple Crown. 